All right, guys, welcome to the Digital Barbell Podcast. Thanks for taking your time to be here. We have an amazing episode for you, so we're going to keep this intro short, but we just have to remind you, let you know about a crazy opportunity you have right now to jump in to our eight-week full body fitness program, Digital Barbell Body. That's right. Body is back, back by popular <laughs> demand. This has been our most popular program to date. We're bringing it back. So like a year or so ago, a little bit longer, we pushed all the programs aside, yeah. focusing on just our custom clients. But we understand a lot of people feel off track after the summer. So we want to lower the barrier to entry to get back mm -hmm. on track between Labor Day and the holidays, mm -hmm. build a ton of momentum. So we made the price crazy low. The workouts are amazing. The end result you're going to get is amazing. Yeah. You're going to want to keep things going through the holidays. Yeah. And you can find all this information out on digitalbarbell.com slash body. But quick synopsis is it's eight weeks, four workouts per week. It's a full body program, which means you're going to do strength training, you're going to do bodybuilding, and you're going to do some conditioning. And it's scalable for all levels. You can have barbells, you can do dumbbells for beginners, for advanced. You can work out at home. You can mm -hmm. do this in a commercial gym setting. And we're doing two options for you. You can either just get the workout program for $147, $149, whatever it is. Yep. Or you can have one of us three coach you through the program, mm -hmm. watch your form, guide you, hold you accountable, all that kind of stuff for $247 for all eight weeks. Like I said, if you've been on the fence, you've been wondering like, hey, I wonder what I can do with the help of these people. Yeah. It's never going to be cheaper than this. There's never going to be a better opportunity. So jump in. Yeah. And it's only eight weeks. The benefit of that coaching option is you get a coach to watch your form, make sure you're moving correctly. You also get a coach to watch your form and make sure you're using the right intensity mm -hmm. that you're making the most of each work workout. Like, you know, a coach can look at it and be like, oh, that's way too light. Let's move up next time. Something you might not have known on your own. And a 247, you can't swing it. At least mm -hmm. jump in on the uncoached version and get the digital barbell experience of our yeah. little secret sauce. See what kind of body composition changes you can make with our training approach over just eight weeks. Enough about that. We have an amazing interview with CrossFit Games champion Jason Grubb Four today. Four time. Four times Masters Athlete Champion. Really good interview. Yeah. I feel like this was like one of my favorite interviews. Super nice guy, mm -hmm. super easy to talk to. He's an RVer, former wedding photographer. We just found out all this yeah. stuff we had in common. <laughs> it's really so cool. awesome. So I hope you guys enjoy this interview with Jason Grubb. Again, digitalbarbell.com slash body to sign up. The program starts September 11th. So here we go. Have a good day, guys. All right, today's guest believes that we should all get bolder, not older. And as someone who just won their fourth consecutive CrossFit Games title at 47 years old, I think that he might be something that knows a little something about that. Welcome to the podcast, Jason. Thanks, guys. And I did get your age correct, right? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, for the time well, being, I'm 47. I, <laughs> I, I level up in a month. Oh, okay, nice. Well, you're still in the same uh, age, age bracket, so that's good news. <laughs> Yes. Um, well, it's only been a few weeks since you won that fourth championship. Has it kind of sunken in yet or, or how are you feeling about it? Uh, yeah, it's sunk in. Um, and I, I still feel as relieved as I did the day that I won. Um, I, I really wanted to win a fourth mm -hmm. uh, title. Um, I mean, I really wanted to win a third title and a second title. Like every one of those come with uh, a lot of internal pressure. Um, and I just remember thinking like after winning three, of course, every age group old, or every year I get older, there's uh, new younger guys entering my age group. And um, as this sport progresses, the younger, e each level of younger people that move into the thing may <laughs> elevates each age group. Like what right. we'll be doing in the 50 plus age group is insane compared to what they're doing. And then, and, and so on and so forth. We all are just getting better. Uh, so, but I really thought it'd be great to win a fourth, like to, to say four time, consecutive would be pretty wild mm -hmm. and um yeah i mean i on another on on the other hand like i can't i can't believe that i'm that guy there's <laughs> lots of times i'll see a video of myself especially when someone else creates it or even the videos that i create and uh i i often am just surprised like i don't know i don't know who that guy is yeah but, uh that's amazing you know, it's, man it's yeah. somehow that's me yeah uh and like like you mentioned like a lot of these guys that are now advancing into the the master's category are people who started CrossFit mm -hmm. in their twenties and you know, their household names at this point, like, mm -hmm. wow, now they're coming in. Like, right. It's going to, it's going to look a lot different over the next 10 years as some of these names that we're used to seeing in the leader on the leaderboard and the individuals start taking over the masters. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. Um, we were watching your behind the scenes video that you made last night on YouTube. 
how did it feel to kind of relive that as you edited it? Oh, it was so much fun. Um, I mean, there were so many predictors in there. Uh, <laughs> and, and the funny part about throwing that, so when I do a behind the scenes, like I did last year, I was able to have like a behind the scenes sort of talking about an event. And then I pull event coverage from YouTube where when CrossFit covered the masters last year. And so I was able to splice together over the past couple of years, a nice storyboard that had me talking about an event, me doing the event, me talking about the event afterwards. And this year I had no footage except for like <laughs> iPhone footage. So it was real scrappy, but I felt like it almost made it more fun because I, I had already done some post mortem uh, videos about the games. And so going back to this behind the scenes, it was going all the way back to the beginning when they announced that the games won't be in Madison next year. Mm -hmm. And then it went back to me riding my bike to the warm up area to practice, visualize my way through the, the weightlifting event, not actually lifting weights, but, but, uh, visually visualizing my way through that. And, and then even all the way towards the last walk to the warm up area, pulling the wagon, um, for that last day. And I think I was talking about the fact that my wife and kids were sick and, you know, I'm so lucky that I didn't get sick. And I bet after the games, I'm just going to just fall apart and get yeah. sick, which is exactly what I did the Monday <laughs> after the games. And then for that full week, I was just so sick. Oh, man. My immune system had, had battled their sickness all week just to steer clear. And then yeah. it finally succumbed and, and I fell into, um, oh, it's just, I was so, so sick the following week. Um, but it's really fun to go back through and relive. Yeah those moments and have even just some of those random conversations uh, with other athletes and, and reveal some of that to the rest of the world. Like, what is it like in the warm up area? And mm -hmm. it's quiet. I mean, it's not, it's not chaos. It's not just grip it and rip it barbells. It's mostly people <laughs> kind of quietly getting ready, quietly scheming in their head, even the individual athletes, because on that last day, we're sort of overlapping with them a bit. And to see them back there, they're just quietly doing their thing and we're quietly doing our thing. And then we got on the field and we like let loose, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, you know, you guys are all in there together doing all that thing, but it's a solo sport. You're competing against yes. these other people, but your performance is only based on what you can do and you have to be mentally prepared. And I think a oh, lot of yeah. people forget about that with mm -hmm. CrossFit. You see everybody doing it together, but you're on your own mm -hmm. <laughs> out there. Oh yeah. And out on the field, it is a, it is a mental game as much as a physical game mm -hmm. and you prepare you know through the season to be at your very best so that you can elicit whatever you need from your body within reason yeah. i mean just mm -hmm. just be able to give every bit of yourself out there and so you have to train for that and the mental side of it is while you're out there you know exerting massive <laughs> amounts of force on external objects hmm. you also on the on the mental part have to be thinking about pacing and thinking about you know planning your way through this workout if i go too hard here what's going to happen later so you're having mm -hmm. this internal dialogue on hitting the gas tapping the brake shifting gears uh, and at the same time you're listening to the announcer and what she's <laughs> saying because you're trying to get any kind of intel on what's right. going on on the rest of the field where are these guys at you're also looking around to see like yeah. you know when we're when we're all rowing you can't see anyone else. So you <laughs> yeah. are listening. And actually this is the second event. I think they walked behind me and like, yeah, Grub is on his 36th calorie. And I was like, Ooh, yeah, let's not, no, 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 <laughs> don't share yeah, that. Tell I guess it works both ways. Like, everyone else is all like, Oh, I got to get Grub. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> keep it. I want to know everyone else is just keep it down. Um, but never thought a, about that. Oh yeah. No, you like, cover the, cover the monitor when yeah. the, the announcer comes behind you. But, uh, no, I mean, you're thinking about that. And then when you get towards the end of an event, if you've got a lead, um, there is one thing about getting down that field and just making a big scene out of it. And there's another mm -hmm. thing about like, hey, you know what? I have a lead and there's another workout today that's going to be really tough. So let's save these legs, just kind of uh, play our game, get across it, make sure we're first. Mm -hmm. like, we're yeah. not gambling. Make sure we do what we need to do. But um, yeah. but yeah, a lot of that is just so mental. And then, yeah. like you were referencing behind the scenes, it's all mental prep. That's all we're doing back there is visualizing, working our way uh, through the workouts, pre-hydrating, getting our drinks ready, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> right, yeah. All planning with the food too. Yep. Well, I want to talk about the the training that actually made you prepared to win these four championships, but let's back up a little bit and talk about yep. Jason in his 20s and 30s. Were you as in were you in as good a shape then as you are now? No. No, um, that was a loaded question. I already knew the answer, it was a loaded right? question. I set you up for that one. It was a fun way to ask it too. Um, 
No, not at all. I, I was a, um, uh, I, I did gymnastics when I was uh, in junior high, like maybe seventh, eighth, ninth, maybe even in, into 10th grade. I think I was, I think I was driving when I stopped gymnastics. Um, and I, I really wanted to be a great gymnast. I, I, I started it. I was kind of good at it. I wanted to be like an Olympian or get a college scholarship or something. And at some point along the way, ninth or 10th grade, I realized I was never going to be good enough. I didn't start early enough. I was really late to the game. So I, I also needed to like get a job to pay for my car and pay for insurance. And <laughs> I wanted those things too. So I, I, I quit and I, you know, I, I was very young and naive and, um, aggressive to get on with life so at 20 i got married at 21 i had uh we had our first first uh baby mm -hmm. who is pregnant and it's gonna be like i'm gonna be a grandpa because of uh <laughs> this this daughter uh awesome. and she's married and, and they're gonna yeah they're expecting in in a uh, uh, december which is fun but uh into my 20s it was like finish my bachelor's degree and then work and work full time with a with a, a newborn <laughs> or whatever and then get a master's degree and work and figure life out and um, have another another child along the way. Um, my son, who's who's 22 now, um, and you know all of that, and that was, and then have that marriage dissolve when I was 30, you know 10 years into that, um, and have a big life change. I played poker for a couple of years in my early mm -hmm. 30s, and um, transition, um, get remarried, start a new, start different a, a different business. But all of those things, life. Uh, pushed out any sense of real fitness like i would in certain seasons try to get up and jog first thing in the morning mm -hmm. like i'd start with like a half a mile and then i'd build up to a mile then a couple of miles a couple of days a week and i build that up and it would start to get cold outside and that just goes dormant yep. um and i did that multiple years and I, I would say my fittest i was probably like 35 and i think i was probably running like 20 miles a week wow but i was also drinking like probably 20 ipas a week uh, right. 20 is that fair uh that's oh yeah no 20 is easy that's easy yeah, that's yeah. Only a i few was just trying day. to think like yeah it's only a few a day and that's literally i really was um lived in a cul-de-sac and happy hour was four o'clock every day rain or shine mm -hmm. we'd go outside and have a beer with with uh you know with doug and bill mm -hmm. um that's just what i did uh so i was i maintained a nice level of fatness through that entire time even when i was running a lot um but at about uh at 38 um i had a sister-in-law have still have one she was just like you know jason we were out to dinner one time she's like i i we, i knew she did crossfit she was she did the whole paleo thing it was peculiar i don't know anything about crossfit but she was like jace i think you'd really like it and i'm like no thanks like i know how to i know what i'm doing and she's like no i really think you'd like it and whatever i, I was like no 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 and then one day she's like hey i get a free month if you sign up and then you get a free month if you come and try it out, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try it out. And I was so nervous and I, I was really hesitant and resistant, which may be your next question. Like, how did I get started? But <laughs> I just tell you that I was so resistant because I didn't want to go as an overweight, old fat guy and look stupid. Like, I don't want to, I never want to go into a situation and look silly. And I mean, if you were to ask me to go to a hip hop dance class, <laughs> I would have the same desire to do that as CrossFit at the time. Like, how about if I go somewhere where I'm really uncomfortable with people I don't feel like I'm going to fit in with and I'm going to look stupid. That's the feelings I was going to have yeah. or I had. But she, I, I said yes. I don't know. I don't even know how I said yes. I must have been drunk. And it was the she IPAs. was like, this must have been a few IPAs. I was like, yeah, I'll come on Wednesday. And I went. Like, I now I have to go. When I got there, can't find the front door because it's a CrossFit gym. Like, I don't know where to go in. <laughs> So I walk in and it, the class had like five people and the coach was super nice. And it wasn't like jazzercise with barbells. It was like, hey, we're going to do like, uh, I don't know, whatever. I can't remember what mm -hmm. I can't remember what we did. But from gymnastics, I could still kick up to a handstand. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about something and uh, they mentioned, I was like, oh, no, I can still kick up to a handstand. They're like, really? Show us. So I kicked up to a handstand for like five seconds and then I stepped down. And um, I mean, they were all blown away that this guy who's 40 or 38 uh, with no no physical fitness whatsoever, could still kick up to a handstand because it's a little bit of a skill yeah. uh, over strength. And they they thought that was amazing. And in return, that stroked my my ego just enough that I was like, okay, uh, maybe I'll do this. If I could be good at this, that would be really fun. 
Um, I di didn't even end up starting at that gym. I went to a different gym that was closer to home. But I, I started the next Monday, six days a week from that on, from then wow. on. That's awesome, that man. That is awesome. Okay, so let's fast forward a little bit um, to kind of more like your current training state. You know, a lot of people who win the CrossFit Games, they are part of training camps. They have professional body workers. Somebody handles their nutrition. Somebody's in charge of like just rubbing their elbow, all that kind of stuff. You live in an RV. You travel full time. You run your business out of this RV. Your family is with you. Some might call this like suboptimal <laughs> conditions. <laughs> yes. How do you, how do you balance? I guess there is no balance is maybe the answer, but how do you handle preparing for the CrossFit games in these crazy, in this crazy lifestyle that you've developed for yourself? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it, it is actually pretty challenging. Um, and it's very imbalanced. Um, I, I talk about it all the time that to, to be great really at anything, whatever you choose to be great at you, there is a level of imbalance. There's, there's no balance in greatness, right? Mm -hmm. Um, if I wanted to be the, you know, the, the best at business, um, I'm going to have to be fairly imbalanced in that. And, and maybe there's people out there that strike a great balance, but, but there's a season at least mm -hmm. where they are way imbalanced. Um, right. And that's more like CrossFit, uh, for me is there's a season of tremendous imbalance and that would be games prep time, right? From, from really like, uh, maybe a few weeks before semifinals, through our age group semifinals all the way to the games um training is now you know a, a significant portion or the priority of my day mm -hmm. and i also need to make money i also need to make a living like i can't there's no uh there's no reserves here I, i'm not sitting on a bag of cash unfortunately and um you know the crossfit games four championships in a row they don't cumulatively increase that payout it's yeah. it is something it's ten thousand dollars but after taxes, I think that pays for like, I don't know, two months of campsites uh, right. where we stay. But um, so it, it, there is a lot of balance, a lot of strategy. There's, um, you know, getting up early to get a rowing session in before a podcast. There's um, and then there's and there's that time where I get a little bit of work done. And oftentimes I'll be doing some recovery in the middle of the day with like Norma Tech boots on my legs, compression pants with a laptop on my lap, catching up on programming. Mm -hmm for my clients the next week. Um, and then, and then going to the pool with my boys for an hour, because what they need is an hour of rough housing. Mm -hmm. And if I just murder them in the pool for an hour, <laughs> I'm super dad. They feel super connected because I pillaged them in, in for an hour. And then it's back to the RV. And I, now I'm going to record my podcast. I'm literally describing my day today. Yeah. <laughs> I'll record my podcast tonight. And then after that, I'll edit the podcast and probably spend another hour or two till about 10 30 tonight. Um, preparing programming for next week for Boulder athletes. So there's mm -hmm. an overwhelming amount of things to do. Um, but I also, I also tend to be more productive when I'm jammed, packed. Mm -hmm. If I have sure. plenty of time for everything, man, I just dilly dally. You know, I, I, I will just mosey my way through the things that need to get done. Last night, before my second training session, I had about a half hour I looked at my list of things I needed to get done and I hammered like five items on that list. And it was awesome because I, I, I mean, it was like literally five minutes for this. Boom. That email is set. These stickers are ordered. This marketing thing is done. This social media post is done. Now I can go work out. So there's, uh, there's another idea that I think, um, I can't remember who, who brought this up. It may have been even Jason Khalifa. Um, but I think he talked about or whoever it was we're talking about 90 minute sprints. Mm -hmm. And that's often how I end up working my way through a day. I might have a 90 minute sprint, which is a uh, session one training session one, where I'm very focused, but I have an hour and a half to get all I need done in that session. And then I'm going to eat lunch maybe for 15 minutes. And I've got a 90 minute sprint to, to work on the next YouTube video. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take a break, do something else, 90 minute sprint to do the next thing. But if I do it in these little sprints, I can be productive. Uh, but in an RV, there's never downtime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just, just maybe 10 o'clock. You're like sitting watching YouTube for an hour, but there's no downtime. Like there's always something to do. Um, yeah. For example, here's an example. We're in Virginia. We have a white Tesla and it's parked in front of our RV so we can be plugged in. And so for like three days, every day I'd wake up in the morning and there was literally, it was as if someone took blackberries and threw them at the car. 
just blackberries like or drop blackberries yeah. rained from the sky <laughs> what it actually is there are some sort there's some sort of fruit in the trees above mm -hmm. that birds eat and then they poop blackberries <laughs> onto the car and no one else's car it's just my white car so i can't have black i can't have blueberry juice all over my car <laughs> my so there were three days last week that i washed the car out of just absolute necessity and offense and i actually have to scrub this stuff yeah now I found out there's no one parking next to us for the next three days. So the, the car is now parked a not under a tree. Yeah. But yeah, I had to do it, right? Surely yeah. you have there's a tarp no somewhere in there. You can cover the Tesla I, with tarp I mean, until you move on I to know, the next but I'm worried the tarp will scratch the Tesla. I mean, you know, there's all these, it's like a delicate yeah. baby. Yeah. <laughs> I think those birds migrated from Texas because yeah, had... we had that exact situation on our back deck. And I was like, what, what? is happening? It was like a week and a half time. And then they went on. Yeah. It was insane. We sent them to Virginia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's so rude. They're so it disgusting. Is. It is. I think like the thing that stands out to me and you telling that story, an yeah. example of your day is, look, there is no hack. There's a ton of stuff to right. get done and you just have to decide that you're going to do it. <laughs> and we're you, all busy. We're like, all busy. Yeah. <laughs> like there is no hack. Yeah. That's... Yeah. There's no shortcut and right. there's no shortcut to training. It, I wish that like, I wish that four 500 meter rows and then a 1700 meter row could take less time. Yeah. I wish that it didn't hurt as much. <laughs> The only the only perk about that is that the warm up is pretty easy. It's the first 500 meter row. Yeah. You know, like yeah. uh, I'm pretty warm. Let's just let's just shock the system. Um, I remember we were watching one of your YouTube videos one time, and you were documenting your games training for the day, and you did all this stuff, and it was dark outside. And then the last thing you said was, "All right, now I'm going to hop on the bike here in the back of the in the toy hauler, and I'm going to knock out yeah. like 40 minutes of zone two. I'm like, "What? Like it's <laughs> yep. dark. You've already done everything. Like that showed me your level of dedication right there. Because 99. It was on the list. Yeah, yeah. it's on the list. You got to do it. I think yeah. you remember that video. I was like, "This is I know my exactly." Mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's a good example of the day to day. So Blakely and I are considering the idea of going full time in a camper. I mentioned this before that we, before we started recording good idea or great idea. <laughs> you will love 90% of it. I guarantee 90%. <laughs> the 10% is, uh, the 10% will get on, get on your nerves from time to time, but it's only 10%. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's packing up and and unpacking and i mean honestly that's it's really satisfying to pack up and unpack like if you're the kind of person that likes to clean out your garage <laughs> and reorganize it you just Sorry. do that every two weeks or yeah. every and honestly there's times when like we're gonna go spend three and a half four weeks in the outer banks later this week so thursday we got to pack up we'll drive down there unpack and settle in for a good long stay mm -hmm. uh, but getting from madison even to Virginia, where we will have been here 10 days on Thursday, it was Indianapolis. So it was, it was uh, Madison, pack up, get to Indianapolis, unpack. Two days later, pack up West Virginia, unpack. Three days later, pack up to Virginia, unpack 10 days. Uh -huh. And those get a little tiring. Um, yeah. So that's a 10%. Um, to be fair, when, though, you have a ski or you have, <laughs> I'm going to have everything. You have a squat, yeah, yeah. you have a full CrossFit gym in the back of your toy hauler that has to be unloaded at each one there of those are stops. Easier, yeah, <laughs> easier situations to pack and unpack. Yeah. Uh, and there are times if we're there for a short stay, I'm not unpacking right. the pull-up rig or the squat rack. It's right. just going to stay and I'll find a CrossFit gym. Mm -hmm. Um, but there are, the, you know, yeah. I'll talk about the negatives that the 10% it's when you're on a podcast, which I was last week and your power goes out mm -hmm. and we have battery backup, but it's disruptive. Or mm -hmm. there's, um, you're trying to run a podcast, as I do, or trying to upload a YouTube video, and your internet is is just dead slow uh, because there's there's some internet issues. And mm -hmm. even though you have backup plans, like I have, I have one method for uh, for internet, and then I have my backup, which I can use my phone as a hotspot. Mm -hmm. I also have a Starlink, which is expensive, but it'll work if I have to. So you have all these backups, but sometimes it's just not working and it drives you crazy. Yeah. Um, people really worry about internet? like this. The primary internet is uh, T-Mobile at home service. Hmm. So it's like $30 a month. It's insane. Yeah. You have a little modem. Um, yeah. It's just, and actually it's big. It's a big thing. So it's like, yeah. it's T-Mobile 5G at home. And so it actually takes a dedicated space on a 5G tower. And it works in most cities. It's you're supposed to be stagnant at mm -hmm. home with it, but every city we go into, I just turn it on and it works. Except like when we were in DC last year, 
T-Mobile doesn't cover that city for that service. Interesting. So then it's got to pull out the Starlink, set it up, reactivate the service, yeah. and get uh, deprioritized. Starlink has a prioritization system. You could pay to be prioritized. It's very expensive. Right. So you have internet, but it's a little bit rough. Huh. Yeah. Um, people really worry about the sewer stuff in an RV. That's like the easiest Piece of thing. Cake, man. It's so easy. Like I mean, not that we do. haven't made mistakes with it in the past and had a little bit of cleanup on our hands, but I've done that. Indianapolis, <laughs> I had my first spill. Oh no! And we say spill. <laughs> it was awful. Yeah. Um, but the the ninety percent <laughs> being able to to go from town to town, like mm -hmm. we're in Colonial Williamsburg, or we're in Williamsburg to visit Colonial Williamsburg, Jamestown, Yorktown, and these are some things that like I didn't learn any. Well, if I learned this in school. I did not care. Mm -hmm. um, so actually right. being here on site and, and seeing the three boats that brought the initial colonies from England here, and there were like 50 people on the largest boat. And the largest boat is not bigger than my RV. It's wow. crazy. Wow. 50 people learning how like muskets work and why they battled in certain formations. Like, th like there's some really cool stuff that we get to learn. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, there's like sleeper cities that we also thought like, well, we stayed in, um, we stayed just outside of Cleveland last year. And like, no one is going to say, hey, outside of Cleveland, you should totally go. You should totally pop <laughs> to the north side or, or the Best east side. Best kept secret. <laughs> Best kept secret is this KOA back there. But it was amazing. They had this lake. I did some open water swimming. The kids, they had bouncy things in the lake. The It was in the middle of just this beautiful forest. We were very close to a great lake, whatever great lake is there. Um, Lake Erie, probably. And Cincinnati was a great town. Um, we're going to have to subscribe to the Jason Grubb like travel guide. because <laughs> Seriously, we're gonna some of the, these. I'm saying all these things, but the, the most amazing thing was you were in wine country. Mm. Did you know that there is wine country in Ohio? No. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, there is. You could go to wineries. Did it's not like know. You just go and we went to a couple of wineries. We're like, this is, a, we're in Ohio, right? Is yeah. That, are we really in is Ohio? This Napa, Napa, Ohio? <laughs> Yeah, there's lightning bugs and wineries. Um, so there's little things like that that, mm -hmm. that you get to discover. I mean, we traveled to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, for example, for the CrossFit Open this year. We were looking to kind of be, we were in the South. We're like, yeah, let's go to Baton Rouge for a month. And we got there and I, I went to the gym that I had talked to beforehand to stay there and train for a month. Made some great relationships there. But when I walked in, I talked to the owner and, and she was like, so you're in Baton Rouge for a month? I was like, yeah, yeah. She's like why why would you come here <laughs> that's right she's from baton rouge <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i get why it would you i come get here? it <laughs> yeah and i was like i don't know it's warm it's, it's february that's... it's 80 degrees like yeah. how about that um and we did go down to mardi gras for one mm -hmm. day we mm -hmm. saw the bacchus parade which was more family friendly was, <clears> and <throat> we got in and got out safely mm -hmm. uh in a two-week-old tesla which is very scary for me <laughs> but oh goodness, uh, yeah. we had a great time and and we're able to create a ton of really cool relationships as we travel around mm -hmm. uh, visiting different gyms. Dallas was great. Amarillo, Texas, also mm -hmm. not your first destination, but probably <laughs> one of the sweetest groups of people that I got to hang out with in a gym. Also, it was very nice. I mean, warm weather is also uh, home, of the, uh, weather. home of the 72 ounce steak in Amarillo. <laughs> the, I know, the I know. We did not for do it. miles. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> um, Okay, let's talk more about RV stuff because this is kind of fun. I told you a story about we were camping in Nashville a couple months ago and I was just going for a jog around the, right. the area and this guy yelled out to me, hey, we're supposed to be on vacation or you're supposed to be on vacation. Meanwhile, he had like the largest beer belly I've ever seen. It wasn't like- We, are, we were at like an RV resort, yeah. not, not like that, you know, so- it was a vacation spot. Right. And you mm -hmm. told me that you're, like, you're used to dealing, you yeah. get a lot of comments like that too. Like, how does that affect you when, you know, the people around you are on vacation all the time and you're in training mode and trying to live a different oh, lifestyle mm -hmm. than most people? You know, it's no big deal. Like that is, that is fine. Um, they're on vacation. They're just super confused as what's going on over <laughs> here. They, whether it's the ice barrel uh, first thing in the morning, right there, they just look, they walk by and they're like, what? In and so I used to have the ice barrel with this. Um, I used to have like insulation, like yeah. wrap around. It looks like it looked like tin foil. Yep. Um, it was reflective. I have the new ice barrel 300, which has insulation built in. So it's a little less, I, I look a little bit less like a, like I'm going to take flight in space or something. Yeah. The, I gave away the other ice barrel, but, um, but we got a lot of questions about that. But yeah, mm -hmm. people just walk by with their beer in hand and just watching me do pull-ups on the rig or, or back squats. Um, 
sometimes people will just shout out uh, random things. No uh, rap. compliments. <laughs> they'll they'll shout out yeah, random things. Um, <laughs> but I I don't look at it like well they're on vacation and I have to work. It's mm -hmm. um I get to do this all the time. That's mm -hmm. kind of the the take that I we get to do this wherever we want, wherever we choose to be is home and um so I feel we feel tremendously privileged now. Yeah. We used to be, my former business was wedding photography. So on Saturdays, when I'm driving into the mountains of Colorado, like Vail or Aspen or something, mm -hmm. and I'm wearing a, a suit and I'm getting ready to go work all day and everyone else has got mountain bikes and they're getting ready to go mountain bike all day, then I'm mad. That made me <laughs> upset, right? I was like so jealous that they got to do stuff on the weekends and I was always working. Yep. This is totally different. I like. I get to work out. I would do this on vacation anyway. So yeah. I'm just living a vacation where I happen to work sometimes and I work out a decent amount of time. Yeah. Man, like worlds are colliding. We have even more in common with you than we realized. Yeah, we what... were wedding photographers <laughs> at one we point too. This. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. You, you didn't even bring up the fact that your legs are like destroyed for two days after shooting a wedding yeah. too. <laughs> Dead. Yeah. The, the wedding hangover the next day is legit. <laughs> like, is. You're horizontal on a couch after eight hours of standing up. <laughs> Your brain is Standing fried. and having one piece of cake for, <laughs> for nutrition, and that's All it. Day. That's it. That's it. Or when they, uh, when they're when they're doing toasts, and you're like, and you're supposed to, or like that you're eating dinner because that's when they're eating dinner, and then the wedding planner comes in and they're like, hey, they're starting toast, and you're like, yeah. no, they're not. They're not supposed <laughs> to start yet. I'm supposed to eat dinner right now. Toasts can wait. You can eat, but and you shoot. can't say that. You just got to yeah. go. Yeah. You got to go. Um, I told you that we follow your YouTube channel, and like you know, as far as your work ethic, it's second to none. How, how much pressure did you put on yourself to, to win this fourth championship? Well, I, you know, I, I, I put, I mean, all the pressure, hundred mm -hmm. percent, like max pressure. Um, but I'm also like realistic. There was part of me that thought like I am 47 in the middle of an age group. There is a chance that someone will come in and it, it'll surprise me. Right. And, and they'll, they'll get me. Um, there's a chance I could get hurt out there. There's a chance that the workouts could be way outside of my favor. Like they could have programmed something that just was going to destroy me. And all of those things are huge concerns mm -hmm. that I can't control. So generally what I do to deal with the anxiety that is building as we approach the games is I'll do everything that I can in the smartest way that I can to make myself most prepared for whatever is coming and whatever happens, that's it. That's all I got. Mm -hmm. And that's tough because I, I definitely prefer to have a lot more control than that, but I don't. The games are, are very much, you know, what comes is you, the, mm -hmm. the hand you're dealt is the hand you got to play. There's no choice on that. So there was also this secondary dialogue that's going on inside my head. Like, well, if I don't win, if I get second, if I get third, there could be a story in that. Right. There could be some lessons in that something, something valuable that I'm going to have to experience that I could share. Um, and not necessarily, I, I don't want to get second so that I can share. Sure. Of course. Yeah. Like, I don't want to do that. I'd rather get first. First is a yeah. funner story. It's much funner. Sure. But if there's second is something, if there's something for me to learn in that and even cool my jets, like, Hey, you don't always have to win. Like mm -hmm. it's okay. Um, and I'm, luckily I don't have to work my way through that internal dialogue, yeah. but I was prepared to, like, if I have to, yeah. I have to. And in fact, there were some athletes, there, not in my age group, but, um, I mean, other athletes in other age groups, big, big names that were sick the week before oh, the wow. games or sick coming into the games and affected their performance. There were a lot of variables. Like my family was sick the week before the games. Yeah. And then again, the week of the games. Yeah. So I was heavily quarantined, but I, I mean, I was, in the in the middle of potentially getting sick yeah. which would have shut down the game so mm -hmm. um it's i put a lot of pressure on myself but i'm also willing to allow whatever happens that's outside of my control it's gonna happen and i can tell a story around that dude you're a half competitor half stoic philosopher <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way to do it i don't know any other way <laughs> i love it um when you looked at the events that you knew were coming were there any that were like oh yeah I got this. And on the other side, were there any that were like, oh gosh, <laughs> I oh, don't yeah, know if I absolutely. got this. Absolutely. Yes. First, first announced workout. Um, I was in Omaha, Nebraska. We were on our way from Colorado up to Madison 
I'm in Omaha at Kyle Casper Bowers gym. If you remember Kyle Casper Bauer, sure. uh, amazing athlete, amazing gym. And they released the weightlifting total. That's our first event. That is, that is the least favorable event I can imagine. <laughs> um, and I was like, God, God, this is the first thing I release. And at the same time, they're always going to have a heavy lift. Now mm -hmm. they're having two heavy lifts. So there's nowhere to hide. Um, and I was, you know, that makes me nervous. And it's event one. We find out it's event one. And what I prefer to do in competition is if I can create an, a lead early and remove all hope, that's what I really want to do. <laughs> Instead, we're going to start with this, this Olympic lift and I'm going to introduce hope because right. I'm not going to win this event. Leave the door. I open. know my competitors. I know every one of those guys. Um, and even a couple of wild cards in the mix in my age division. Um, so I'm hoping for like a fourth or a fifth in this event, like middle of the pack, will be fine. Um, so I was nervous about that, but also I had to remember that like, that's a specialist event and mm -hmm. CrossFit tends to reward generalists, mm -hmm. right? In overall the five, four day, three day competition, we're going after the best overall general athlete. Okay. So we have this specialized event there. The second thing they announced 5k run. Well, there was two things about that one. It's another specialist event. So the guys that, that get last or low in the weightlifting, they might, they're probably going to win the run. And again, this is another <laughs> specialist event that I'm going to hopefully be on yeah. the upper side of that, but I don't see myself winning it. I'm a good runner. I had been doing a ton of 5Ks actually in my training, so I was very well prepared for it. Uh, but I know there's going to be some fast guys. So those are the first two events they announced. I'm like, okay, we need, <laughs> we need something really gymnastics for me. Yeah. I need something that I can just crush. Well, what they do, they release the rest of the events a couple of days before the games. And um, I mean, honestly, looking at the rest of the events, except for the last event, they saved that for us uh, to reveal much later. Um, the rest of the events, I was like, okay, okay. Burpee box jump over, sandbag carry, or a jerry bag carry, wall balls, rowing, wall balls. Okay, I'm, that is a grinder. I'm good at a grinder. Rope climbs, deadlifts, sled pulls, sled pushes. I'm That's a grinder. Yeah. Workout, like, that's good for me. Gymnastics, pistols, GHDs, I should crush that one. Um, I got a little hung up on balancing on one foot. I could not stand on one foot on my pistols. You had to do five on each foot. And I had a balance problem, not a pistol yeah. problem. Um, so I got a little stuck on that one. Gave away a couple of points. But uh, general CrossFit, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what the workout looks like. If it's a couplet, triplet, four-time, chipper, man, I'm going to be good at any one of those. Specialist events are going to have the specialist win. Mm -hmm. But again, it's this idea. You can have three specialist events and five CrossFit events, and you're still going to see an outcome where the – the overall best athlete is there. So that was now in let's go back to that event where I gave away like four spots on event one and I gave them hope. Um, that had a one minute reset right into event two, which was awesome. So I hit all my lifts exactly how I practiced them exactly how I, I thought I would. So I had tons of internal momentum, even though I knew what other guys were getting, I hit my mm -hmm. lifts, PR my, my clean and jerk of all things. And, yeah. One minute reset. Now we start the second event, which was a heck of a grinder of a chipper workout. And I get myself a nice solid lead on this workout. And I, uh, you know, I, I win it by 30 seconds at least yeah. with mm -hmm. tapping the brakes at the end. Like I don't have to go fast at the end, which is such a relief, but I finished that event with like an exclamation point saying like, Hey, I didn't yeah. win this event, which is fine. But this event, there was no hope yeah. from, yeah. from the moment we started. <laughs> There was no way I was losing. If you thought event. the door was open a yeah. little bit, it's yeah. not. It is not. I slammed it, is not. it shut. I love it. And actually, you walked away with three first places and two second yep. places. Um, yep. And I don't think you ever got anything lower than fourth, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think fourth, fourth, fourth on, a, yeah. on the others. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, really, really good. And that's, you don't have to win every event. I, I prefer winning every event. But you don't have sure. to. Yeah, look at Justin Medeiros. I'm not obviously not this past year, but in previous he's won years. one, one event ever, right? right. Yeah, that's amazing. So um, obviously, the training that you do now prepared you mm -hmm. to win handily. Let's say you were in charge of programming for somebody 25 years old with hopes of coming to the CrossFit Games. What would the main differences between 47 year old training versus 25 year old training look like? Oh man, you could just squeeze in more which is great, you know, <laughs> volume. Um, yeah. And ideally this 25 year old lives with his parents or her parents, right? <laughs> Has a few um, sponsors. They, yeah. He, he sponsors lives at home. 
uh, doesn't have kids, doesn't have four kids, um, doesn't, you know, buy RVs and F-450s <laughs> and take on debt. And they, you know, hopefully they just have, they're just free. So one, yeah. they need to be free of, of all encumbrances. Um, in the good, the good ones, the bad ones, whatever. But um, the the thing that's amazing about being younger, that 25 year old age, is that you could do two sessions. Um, you can even do three sessions a day, and you can recover quickly between those sessions. And it's all about recovery. It's all about being able to to heal, recover, and have max output in another session, heal or recover, mm -hmm. and then have max output. So, what we're limited to as masters athletes is the the sense that we can't recover as fast. So we have to create rest periods. We have to create breaks. Like for example, today, my rowing session was early so that I can rest six to eight hours before my second session. So I'm fully recovered for that session. Mm -hmm. um, and that's very, very intentional. I used to do like a session and then rest for like an hour and then a second session. And I'm really overlapping there. Um, my recovery period, I'm definitely not getting myself as prepared. So being that younger, you could squeeze in more in less time. And that's really the, that's really the advantage. Um, yeah. it's an, it's an insane advantage. So yeah, if I was, if I was, uh, if I was training them, we'd be probably be doing two to three sessions a day, eating so much food, um, <laughs> sleeping nine to 10 hours a day, sleeping Brooke Wells type numbers right there. And, uh, and, and not doing anything else in life. I mean, living, mm -hmm that Matt Frazier lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know a, a 28 year old, I think he's 28. Um, I was able to train with him as semifinals, individual athlete, great guy in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, and he's got to work. Like I was like, Hey, Monday, we're going to train together. He's like, ah, I got to work on Mondays. Bummer. Like you yeah. got to work on Mondays. What, <laughs> what, is, what that? is that? You yeah. like, yeah, that's crazy you talk. That. You're like in your twenties. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you were married at 20. And no, no, like, married with kids. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. train on, I train on Mondays. And that was not your lifestyle. They could take care of themselves. Um, but yeah, that but, yeah, makes yeah, a lot of sense. That's the more thing. More volume, much, more recovery. Much more. Yes. They need less recovery. I think that's been probably the main tenant of our training as we've, uh, as changed. Yeah. And probably just less intensity too. like our, our own training has been a little bit less CrossFit, a, a lot more bodybuilding yeah. and strength type of work too. Mm -hmm. Not hammering our heart rate up to one. We're not competitors, but you know, we're not yeah. we're not hitting 180 to 200 beats per minute five days a oh, week. Oh, I'm never like there. We were ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> this is the interesting thing. So we mentioned that. So I'm in training, I do pay attention to my heart rate quite a bit, and I have uh, other masters athletes that that uh, I work with. My co-founder, my business, we we often will share a workout in a text message thread. And then share our heart rate. Like we'll track it. And of course we'll screenshot, right. we'll share our heart rate. So in training, I'm never, never in zone five ever. And I'm rarely in zone four. Even if I'm in zone four, I'm really suffering. Um, so my rowing intervals this morning, I may have been in zone four, like, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple of minutes uh, total out of all those rowing, but I'm just never there. And I push myself really hard in training, but it's training mm -hmm. and, and my, I do build capacity there, but I'm yeah. never, I'm never maxing that out. Now it's funny because when I was at the games, I was really curious to see where these heart rates were. So every, every event I was actually starting my watch to track the workout. I, I, co I commented to Blakely watching the behind the scenes last night. I'm like, Jason's wearing his watch while he's doing <laughs> yeah, this oh, workout. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. Wearing my watch. I wanted to know what my heart rates were. Yeah. Yeah. And I was in zone four and zone five a lot wow. uh, in performance, like mm -hmm. big time. So there is something to be said as masters athletes about training volume, yeah. training intensity, which it does have to be intense, mm -hmm. but performance intensity is a whole different ball game. And I really think I, I haven't confirmed this. I'm still kind of testing this out, but I don't think that we have to train in those zone five areas to build capacity there. Mm -hmm. um, right. I really think training is its own category. Um, and like you said, even on the barbell side of things, like when I do back squats, um, it's not like I'm not repping out back squats. Mm -hmm. I'm doing more bodybuilding style back squats where it's eccentric movement down, a solid pause on the bottom, and then a fast movement up and trying to get that full range of motion, that yeah. full deep stretch in my glutes all the way at the bottom of that squat, which is a very bodybuilding type of squat because mm -hmm. we are trying to create muscle mass hypertrophy. Um, and then we're also, I mean, we mess all that up because we're also CrossFitters. So yeah. we're just a constant balance of like, 
We're trying to get strong, yeah. trying to build muscle, and then messing all that up by doing <laughs> cardio and doing uh, high intensity interval workouts. So but we are trying to overall, you know, be really smart about that yeah. In, yeah. in training versus performing. Yeah. Yeah. You're, everything you said is awesome. Mm-hmm. Love all that. That leads me to the question before we wrap up, like who is Boulder athlete for? Is it for somebody yeah. who wants to be competitive or just your general athlete out there? It's a good question. It's a good question. It's both. Okay. So we have, um, we have our Boulder compete program. We have our Boulder daily program. Hmm. And right now we have those as two separate, uh, SKUs, two separate purchase options. Literally this week, we're combining that into one. So if you sign up for Boulder athlete, Going into the future, you'll have access to the compete program, to the daily program, to a dumbbell and body weight program. And eventually we want to build up some endurance and some bodybuilding tracks in there as well. So basically mm-hmm. you sign up for Boulder Athlete, you have access to everything. That's really what we want to do. So mm-hmm. we're making that change this week because we're three weeks into this and realizing like, why don't we just give them everything? We'll just do that. But in these tracks, the compete version is what I do. You want to know what I do? Sign mm-hmm. up. You don't even have to do it. You just come in and look. Yeah. You just sign up for a three-day trial to see what I'm doing. You'll see my <laughs> scores in there. You'll see exactly what I'm doing. That's cool. Uh, which is a bit of a shocker sometimes. People are like, <laughs> wow, I had no idea this level of volume, even in the off-season. Mm-hmm. And it's smart volume. So we always talk about the idea that as master's athletes, we're not trying to – we have to train differently than younger athletes, right? We, we can't train like we're 20 anymore. So that does mean less volume or – it means smarter volume. So it still takes time. I think often people are like, wow, this is so much volume. No, it's not volume. It just takes you a little bit of time. You know, the standard compete program is like an hour to an hour and a half first session, and about the same for a second session. And this is focused. This isn't like I'm playing patty cake and I'm checking my phone and scrolling yeah. Instagram and, and, and TikTok in between sets. No, you are, I'm taking specific breaks. I'm chipping my way through this. Mm-hmm. That's the compete. It's what I do. The daily takes the essentials from the compete and gives that to someone who has about 60 minutes mm-hmm. to get the work done for the day. And that's, that's the everyday athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the garage warrior. It's someone who, you know, they've got this slight itch to be just a little bit better than that general class CrossFitter. Yeah. And again, there's nothing wrong with going to a CrossFit class and just being a healthy human being. It's, it's the funnest thing you can do. But if you've got that slight itch, mm-hmm. but you don't have the, two, the double sessions, you do the daily and then on Saturdays <clears throat> just do the compete one because yeah. you got more time yeah <laughs> like, is it a certain age range for you for your <clears throat> clients or is it yeah yeah it is a certain age range so we I do have things broken down into 35 to uh 35 to 45 45 to 55 55 okay. to 65 65 plus uh we have those age ranges uh broken out now most of our work is based on RPE rate of perceived exertion so it actually makes scaling very simple yeah um but then if we do have a Metcon with prescribed weights, we'll prescribe weights that are appropriate right. for those age groups. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, I mean, that's just standard. And that's the idea behind creating something for masters by masters, yeah. Yeah. where traditionally I've done programming and great programming, um, not to poo poo any of the programs I've done historically, because they've all, any program you do consistently will help you tremendously. Mm-hmm. But this is a program that's not just a watered down version of yeah. what a 25 year old is doing. Yeah. This is for masters. And in fact, I think it's, I think it's good enough for 25 year olds. Like, but Hey, they're not going to sign up. That's fine. I'm targeting <laughs> masters. Like yeah. it's like in wedding photography. You can't take everyone's yeah. pictures. You're not, yeah. we, we only shot weddings in the mountains, outdoor weddings in the mountains. Mm-hmm. If they had a wedding in a hotel in Denver, that was not our wedding. Yeah. We were mm-hmm. very specific in that. And that's the same thing here. This is for masters. And if a 25 year old sneaks in, we're not going to kick them out, but you know, dude, there's yeah. just so much more that you can do and you could do our program and probably do well, but you need more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You have more, you have the capacity for more. So, yeah. um, there's a, there's an RV park at the rogue invitational here in Austin. <laughs> any, any chance you're, you're going to show really? up in, in October? No, it's a cool event. absolutely not. It's too far. Um, <laughs> at least yeah, as a spectator. No, <laughs> It's so funny. I, I would God, I would love to come out to the Rogue Invitational. Mm-hmm. It's so um, fun. It's, yeah. So yeah, if anyone works at Rogue, if any, if I don't know, I'm a four time champion. If yeah, I should get yeah. this guy, get this guy uh, pass to the get RV me, park get and me out there. parking or something. I'll do it. Uh, we are. We'll be at the Outer Banks until uh, late September, mid September. Then we're in Savannah, Georgia, for two weeks to explore that area. Very excited about that. Cool. Uh, then we're going to Birmingham, Alabama, from there, which is like 
it's the second week in October, and Birmingham to Austin. Oh man, that's a, <laughs> that's a drive. That's a drive. That's a yeah. drive, drive at least. Yeah. yeah. Cool. In an RV, a... that's yeah. those are long days. <laughs> yeah, we only like to knock out like four ish, five yeah. hours yeah. a day max. It's such What's a What's cool the longest day you've done? Oh, Probably sorry. Six and a half hours, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Last year we went from here to Idaho mm -hmm. and we went, we went like every day we moved yeah. and that was a mistake because yeah. we were just trying to get yeah. to Idaho and it was just, like, I, we've done it that. was exhausting. Yeah. yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. You don't unpack, you just sleep and yeah. eat and get driving again. It, you're, it's, it's too much. Mm -hmm. Even two days in a spot, just if you have a one down day, you're like, yeah. good, I could drive. I could go eight, 10 hours one day. If I know I've got a buffer day, I could yeah. do yeah. that. That's true. Yeah. We're like, yeah, we didn't get Moab's to like, beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Now we, we didn't go get to, to enjoy. <laughs> like we're like in Santa Fe and we're like, oh, wait, we don't even get to enjoy this, yeah. this place. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> well, tell everybody where they can find you on the socials, where they can find your programming website, everything. Yep. Great. So on the socials, uh, on any social, you can search for Jason Grubb and I'll be the first, uh, spot. So it's, it's at Jason Grubb underscore fit on, uh, inst or fitness under, uh, and that's on, um, wow. That was really a, just a really <laughs> rough way of saying we'll all get, that. We'll okay. get the producer search. to edit that out. Oh, wait, we don't have a producer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know, right? Search for Jason Grubb on any of the platforms. You'll yeah. find me. It's very easy. Uh, JasonGrubb.com is a primary website where you can connect to everything. And BoulderAthlete.com. That's B-O-L-D-E-R okay. athlete. Um, that's where you find me there. And um, best master's training on the planet right nice. there. Awesome, I like man. that name too. Yeah, that's great. a great idea. Wish we thought of that. Dude, we could play on all the words. Get bolder, <laughs> stay bold, <laughs> yeah. be bold, yeah. live that's a bolder great. life. I mean, we've got all of it's them. All there. We, we own the word. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> well, cool. We have just as much confidence in you next season as we did this season. So we're looking forward to number five coming up. Yeah. No pressure. I'm going to give it a go for sure. <laughs> great all to right. meet you. Yeah, thanks for your time, Jason. Thanks, guys.